you are listening to the Fits and Healthy podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, also known as Lauren Fitz. I'm a medical doctor, a fitness instructor, an entrepreneur, a health and fitness coach, but most importantly, I am a lover of life. And here on the Fits and Healthy podcast, I intend to give you a ton of great information and knowledge that will serve as potential power so that you can live a life by design and make it more fits and healthy. And don't forget to listen to the disclaimer at the end. I'm not your doctor, yo. All right. Enjoy the episode. Much love. Ciao. Hello and welcome to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. My name is Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald and I am the host of this lovely podcast on launch day and I have an amazing guest that I'm going to interview to celebrate this special day for me in my podcast career. So I have with me um, Rob Dial. Hello, Rob. What's up? Uh, hey, you could call me Dr. Dial, but oh, I, yeah? I'm not a doctor, but oh. no. I always, I always thought it'd be great to be a doctor, be like, Dr. Dial, we need you. Code that red, Doctor Dial, but but it does have a know. nice ring to it. It almost sounds like know, soap right? opera or like Friends, Joey's <laughs> role that he played, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so for those of you that don't know who Rob Dial is, um, this dude is. I, I was first introduced to him um, by a colleague who was telling me, "Have you heard?" this podcast and come to find out, I don't know how I hadn't because I love listening to podcasts. I've been a podcaster for years now and um, he happens to be the host of one of the number one podcasts in iTunes called MWF Motivation, standing for Monday, Wednesday, Friday Motivation. And so I'm like, huh, all right. And so I look it up and I start listening to it. And this dude has so many nuggets of wisdom for someone. I mean, you're young. Let, yeah. Let's just let's face it. You're young. I started, I started early. You could, but you you did. could say it for you sure. Did. Oh yeah. You I started did. when I was 19. Most people don't. So yeah. Yeah. And, and you were making seven figures before you were 21. This makes me I want was, to vomit was, with my was, mouth. I was running, I ran my first seven, seven figure business uh, before I turned 22. Yes. That I just vomited just a little in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure what a lot of people are thinking and assuming is that you grew up rich and that you grew up entitled and, yeah. and, and that, well, of course, if I would have grown up wealthy, I could have made that much money by 21. Why don't you right. tell them the reality of it. So I was born really rich, actually. <laughs> no, um, I was not. I was not born rich. I was born uh, uh, to kind of give you guys my background, so you have an idea of who I am. Um, so I grew up in Florida. Uh, I'm now live in Austin, Texas. And um, when I was about nine, yeah, I know you got your your Texas flag behind you. <laughs> exactly. When I was uh, when I was nine years old, nine or ten years old, my parents got divorced because my father was an alcoholic. Um, and then when I was 15, my father passed away from alcoholism, liver failure came out of nowhere, wasn't expecting it. Um, and he was the very first person of my entire life that I knew who had passed away. Grandparents, my grandparents actually didn't just pass away until last year. So literally the very first person that I knew. Um, and so that being said, I, I, I became a very, number one, I was very quiet. I wasn't an, I'm, I'm still a, an extroverted introvert more than anything else. I was a very quiet kid. I got made fun of, got bullied, all of those things. Um, and the reason why was because I, I couldn't stand up for myself. I didn't talk out. I was just, you know, some awkward kid. And, um, you know, the day my, my father passed away on a Thursday, I went back to school on a Monday. So I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want anybody to. Uh. Um, and so I was just the kid who kept everything in and just, just, just so after a while, I was like, I think I have to figure myself out a little bit. Um, and when I was 19 years old, I started with a company called Cutco. Um, if you've ever heard of Cutco, they sell knives. And so I started as a knife salesman at 19 years old. Yes. And um, it was the best thing I'd ever done in my entire life. It was so hard. But the thing about it was that I had to learn about myself. In order to grow, in order to get better, I had to push myself to learn about myself. That's really what it was. And they talk a lot about personal development. They talk about all of those things. And so I wasn't a really great sales rep when I first started, um, but I was a really hard worker. I was determined. And it was like the first time in my life where I was like, I think I, I, think I can finally see this, this light at the end of the tunnel. Like This might be what I've been looking for. And so hmm. I might suck at it now, but I'm going to put every single thing that I can into it to try to be as good as I can. So 
I, um, I actually paid to have a mentor when I was 19 years old. I paid $500 a month um, to have somebody coach me and teach me. That was more than I paid in rent. I only paid $350 in rent. I paid $500, um, put on my credit card because I didn't even actually have the money um, every single month to talk to a mentor. And um, the mentor changed my life completely. Um, I went from making $17,000 a year before to the next year, 177000 And then, you know, I started running my own office with the company. Um, and by the time I left the company, when I was 24 years old, I had trained over 2,000 sales reps and they sold about $5.6 million in knives, something like that. It was, it was, it was wow. a, a good amount. Um, and so I, what happened though is I was, I was a 20, 21 year old, 22 year old kid that was training and interviewing people that were 30, 40, 50, 60 years old in some cases. And so um, you can't really have the mindset of a normal 21 year old <laughs> and go and try to train somebody and, and have, you know, and I put quotation marks, but control in some sort of way. If you're running yeah. a three day, 17 hour seminar for a 60 year old person and you're 21, you have to have, you know, some sort of cloud or you have to be respectable in some sort of way. Yeah. And so that's how I kind of got obsessed with personal growth. And um, so that's, that's, we, we definitely were not, uh, we did not have money in a lot of different cases. Um, we weren't terribly, you know, we weren't homeless or anything like that, but, no. um, there was no silver spoon that was in my mouth or anything like that. That's, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, no. Cause I, I mean, I live here in Newport beach and I see these kids that drive around in Range Rovers that I know that they haven't worked for. And right. I, I mean, you know, there it's, there's a lot of money that's passed on to generation oh, yeah. to generation. And, and I, I know that people probably have assumed that about you. I mean, it's cause yeah. you're not the stereotypical person that, um, <laughs> makes, that kind of money at such a young right. age. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it was, uh, I, I went the different route of everybody else. I, I dropped out of school early because I realized that there was potential to go in, and be successful. Okay. And, um, it wasn't really, I was, I was, I was into my own self-education. I was reading all the books. I was going to seminars. I was paying these things the best we could. Um, and I remember that when I was 21, I went and opened an office with a company, came back and um, was running, I ran it for the summer, moved back to go back to school because they have like a, hey, you can go try it out. You can do it, see what you think. Right. And um, I went back to my, <laughs> I still remember it. I, the, the, I can tell you the second I decided to quit school. Um, I was in the history of civil war class and I was on a test. I, was, I literally took my phone out and I had all of the dates in the phone and I didn't show up to the class the day before because I was like, I'm going to tell him or two days before, I'm going to tell him that I was sick so that I would take the class in a different room because I have all of the answers on my phone. And, uh, and I'm doing the test and I'm like, I'm probably going to get a good grade on this, but this is literally doing nothing for me. I'm spending thousands of dollars to be here when I could be taking these hours and put it in, into making thousands of dollars. Right. And, uh, and that was the second that I decided that I was going to drop out of school. And, um, and so mine's, mine's been a much different route than most people, but I was lucky enough to have a great Support them. It was whatever you want to do, you can do. Because um, I was, I was at the point where I was like, do I drop out? Do I stay? Because I hate, I hate not doing something that I said I'm going to do. Right. And she's like, well, the only reason you go to school is to make money. You're already making money. Why don't you just drop out? And I was like, high five. All right, I'm going to get out of this. And that was, that was it. So that's how it worked for me. I like your mom. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. So I'm just curious, how old were you when you first started with personal development? 19. Yeah. So I, I hadn't, the first book I ever read was, uh, it actually somewhere. Um, the first book that I ever read is, uh, is a book called, um, my mentor told me to read it, said it was his favorite book. It was the five major pieces to the life puzzle by Jim Rohn. And okay. it was the first time I ever might, might've honestly been the first time I ever finished a book in my life. And, um, it was this little teeny tiny book, but it was like, I, I still have it. And there's just so many highlights in it. Just like, this makes sense. This makes sense. And so, um, I think that what happened was I had, uh, I feel like I was just a smart enough kid looking back now to realize, you know, do I have some childhood trauma? Um, how can I get, well, maybe I can just go ahead and read and see if I can figure myself out. I'm not, I'm not, going to therapy or anything like that. So maybe I can become my own therapist is kind of a lot of things. So, um, so 19 years old was when I got into it. And then it was just like, you know, one of the years I read 40 books because I was just like so obsessed with trying to make myself better. And then the, the more I realized, the more that I learned, the more that I could then teach. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I think it, it helped me as a manager was I was like, I can teach people all of these things that I'm learning, which, you know, can help people. Um, it's interesting because I think in, in that company, a lot of 
a lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of them who stick around to become very successful have mm -hmm. somewhat of troubled childhoods. Uh, something huh. happened to them. A lot of my friends, you know, come from bad shits, all of those things that were with the company. And the reason why I think is because it's kind of like you, you come to this point where you're like, oh, I can change my life here. And people believe in me and people are saying mm -hmm. that they believe in me and people are helping me out and they're supportive and they're talking about growing and they're talking about, you know, how much was your paycheck? How can we make sure that you make more and all these things? And so I think that people who, you know, might not have the best childhood or people that didn't come from a lot of money become very attracted to that because um, it's, it's a very supportive environment where you can really change your life doing it. So um, I don't, I, it might sound like I stick for the company. They sponsor me in any sort of way. They don't, they don't <laughs> they pay don't. me anything. Just, I They're just still around that, though. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And uh, I know that when I have kids, they will 100% work for the company. That's for sure. That is awesome. How yeah, did so you 19, come across Cutco? I'm just curious. So it was an ad in the school newspaper and no uh, it was, yeah, it was. And uh, oh it was, gosh. it was the, it's funny because they, they have about 40,000 people that they recruit a year. They recruit, they're one of the biggest recruiting companies in the world. Um, so wow. they recruit about 40,000 people per year. But the reason why is because um, it's, it's hard and not a lot of people stay. I mean, the average person probably stays for two weeks. Um, I was Ooh. there for six years. Wow. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you know, try to take a kid that's 17, 18, 18 and, um, and tell them that they have to go out with people and knock on doors or go and show knives in people's houses when I still don't know how to cook anything. And I don't know how I sold <laughs> knives, but it's like the industry. But you were the number one seller, salesman for their company for how long? I was, I was, there's a couple different, so there's different categories. Um, okay. I was the number one pilot sales manager. I was the number one district manager. And then um, I was never the number one sales rep, but um, I was better as a manager than a rep, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah. Dude, you made seven figures as for your 21. I mean, see, yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So I know that you're a big fan of Tony Robbins uh -huh. and, um, I compared to most people I know, I got started with personal development earlier than most, not yeah. as early as you though. I yeah. really wish that I would have, but, um, but I, I know that, um, one thing that we're going to be on this call is pain and pleasure. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if, if the, the first time that you ever, uh, started learning about this concept was from Tony Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can, I, I have a, I have a pretty, a pretty good memory. And so I remember a lot of like, so I can remember the second I decided to drop out of school. I can remember the second that I heard this and the way it changed my life. So, um, I was, I, I made a lot of money, but I also spent a lot of money. It just, okay. it was just, it's easy to spend money when you, you know, it, it's just easy. It's, you yeah. know, if you don't pay attention to it, you, which yep. most people don't, it's easy to get rid of it. And so, yep. Um, I was driving to my office from Tampa all the way down to my office in Fort Lauderdale. And I was listening to uh, the book, which uh, I actually have right next to me as well. It's funny because I have like my favorite books that I keep right next to me at all points in time. Um, <laughs> Y'all should yeah, learn something there. from it's, him. It's, That's, it's says, down there. says a lot. <laughs> I'm like surrounded by him. So there's some back here. There's some yep. right here. There's next to my bookshelf right here. So, um, so I was listening to the audio book of Unleash the Power Within and it was chapter four, if I'm not mistaken. In chapter four, he talks about pleasure versus pain. And um, in the way I related it at that time was pleasure versus pain was, was money. And so um, I'm a little bit more of a hardcore person. Like, like I remember one time when I was learning, not, I was obsessed with basketball in high school. Okay. And I remember I took a, uh, a rubber band and I put it around my wrist because I heard that a professional basketball player did this at one point in time. And every time that I would miss a shot, I would snap it as hard as I could. And I would get these welts because I would just every, I would practice three hours a day every single day. And I get these welts around my wrist because I would snap it so hard because I, I I heard that if you can link something to pain, you're not going to want to do it. And so I was, uh, I was listening to Tony Robbins and, and I was like, man, I, I have, I can, I, it's so weird because I can literally vividly remember the second that I realized this because I was pulling into a gas station in Radiance, Florida. And I was like, oh my God, this actually makes sense. Like, I understand this. I'm not making, I'm not saving money because I think I have so much pain linked to money of like, hearing as a kid, you know, just not just from my mom or anybody, I guess I could have heard that money is root of all evil or money's, you know, we don't have money. You don't have this, you don't have right. these. And so it's like, there was pain linked to it. And so if there's pain linked to something, you're going to try to stay away from it. Yeah. And so the way I like to explain it, the way it kind of hit into my head was what, if you know somebody that you really don't like, right? If somebody that you maybe they were a bully as a kid, or maybe they're just somebody who they just rub you the wrong way whenever you see them um, or whenever you interact with them. And they, maybe you get anxious when you think about them or you start to get pissed off when you think about them or they bring up bad memories or whatever it is. 
that if you see them and fall while you're walking down, you're going to be like, oh crap. And you're, you're going to get those feelings of anxiety and try to avoid them any way that you possibly can. And so it kind of clicked in my head. I think I have anxiety whenever I check my bank account. I think that I have pain linked to hmm. checking my bank account because it's always less than I thought it was. Right. And I have pain checking my credit card because it's always more than I thought it was going to be. And I get anxious. I have these anxious feelings. And so if I have anxious feelings thinking about somebody and I have anxious thoughts or I hate somebody and I don't want to be around them, I'm going to do everything that I can to avoid them. Right. And so I realized, hold on, if I get anxious feelings and I think that, you know, even though I want it really bad, I think that part of me hates the, the, the control that it does have over me. Mm. I'm probably going to do everything that I can to avoid it, but not only to avoid it, but when I have it to get rid of it. Mm. And it kind of clicked. And I, and I realized, so I thought about it, pleasure versus pain. What he basically says is this, as a human, everything that you do is either towards pleasure or away from pain, right? And so I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, well, but, but you are more likely to get away from, to try to go away from pain than you are to, to go towards pleasure, which is why most people don't hit their goals is because they're, they're linking something that whatever it is, I'll, I'll talk about it. Like for instance, cold calls, people, if someone's yeah. a salesperson, the number one thing they usually hate is making cold calls. There's so much pain linked to making cold calls and people hanging up on them and cussing them out that yeah. to go towards pleasure making a lot of money because that pain is so immediate. It's right there in front of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I thought about it with money and that was my thing at the time is like, how can I get better at saving? How can I get better at stop, you know, not spending money? Cause I would go into just a store and be like, well, I'm here. I might as well spend money. I just had right. pain. Um, and the reason why is because your brain has a small release of dopamine, which is yep. an addiction where you're like, I just bought something. I feel good for the next 10 minutes. And then 10 minutes after you feel exactly the same. Yes. And so that was the pleasure that I was linking to that little release of dopamine or getting a shirt that I thought, you know, made me feel better about myself for 10 minutes. Right? That right. was the pleasure that I was going towards the pain that I was also associating with money was checking my bank account. I didn't want to check my bank account because I don't know where it is. I don't want to check my credit cards because I don't know where it is. I'm not, I wasn't paying attention to any of it. So it was pleasure was spending money. The pain was thinking about money and checking it and checking my bank accounts and paying bills and doing all of those things. And so I realized that my pleasure reversed uh, of the way it should be. And so I thought about, I was like, all right, so what do I need to do? I need to save more. I need to spend more. So I, I need to save more and I need to check my bank account more and I need to spend less. And so what I did was I said, I'm linking pain, looking at my bank account. I'm linking pleasure to spending money and getting that release of dopamine. What I need to do is I need pain to going and spending money. I need to link pleasure to watching my bank account grow. And so I made myself check my bank account every single day for years. I can, I literally did it today. I could tell you the exact dollar round at all of my together because I check it every single day. And then I keep the calculator on my computer up. So it's literally right here. And I could see the exact amount of money that I have in all of my savings, all of my, my PayPal account, my Bank of America account, all of them. I have it. So I, I have that pleasure mechanism of watching it grow. <sighs> that gives so me anxiety. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. It gives most people I think people I might anxiety. have an issue that I need to deal with. <laughs> I check it every single day because that's what I made myself start to do. I, it wow. was like, I would check my bank account or my credit card once a month, maybe. Right. Right. But I, because there was so much pain, but then I started getting a lot of pleasure and it was hard at first. I'm going to make myself do it every single day. I'm going to make myself check my bank account. And then when I watched it go up and I was like, oh my gosh, I have a hundred bucks more than last month or I have 200 bucks more than last month or a thousand bucks more, whatever it was, you start to get some pleasure out of that. You're like, this is actually pretty cool. And then when I would go into a store, the reason why I told you that the story of being a basketball player is I I got another rubber band. And every time I went into a store and I had the feeling of I should buy this, I would snap brain. Would he lead me to go? No pain. That's that's because your brain, you still have an animal part of your brain. Uh And I was like, no, I'm going to switch it. I'm just, I'm not going to do that anymore. And, uh, and my girlfriend, I tell you, I hate spending money now. I, I hate spending money. (laughs) I love saving it. I love looking at my bank account. Um, and it's like, like, it does, and you get to the point where you know when I was younger, I bought a brand new Audi and all that stuff, and I was I thought it was all cool. Right. And, and then I I had the Audi for like three years, and I was like this, and I bought a 2007 Santa which is like you know it's light blue. It's like it's literally like the the, the soccer mobile is what it is. I still <laughs> have the 2007. It's got 105,000 no, miles on it. I do. Awesome. I still have it. Um, and the bumper like the bumper doesn't look great because I accidentally hit a hydrant pulling out of one of my friend's places like five years ago. Awesome. So I've had the same car for six years and it's like, it works. I don't need anything else. Right, um, right. And we're moving to Italy to get rid of it and sell it and then just not have a car. When we move. So, um, so it's all about linking pleasure versus pain. And all of that clicked when I was listening to Tony Robbins 
as I was driving down and pulling into a gas station. So long story, but that's, that's exactly, um, you're exactly right. I heard it from Tony Robbins. Okay. So, so give us some helpful examples for the listener, the common things that this pain pleasure principle Mm -hmm. can help them. Like for instance, there's a lot of people that follow me because they want to get healthy and Mm -hmm. and reach their health and fitness goals. Mm -hmm. So give us some examples. Yeah, for sure. So a couple of different examples I can think of off the top of my head. Um, it's this, and this is, it's so easy. Once you understand this to just figure yourself out very quickly. What do I want, right? You fit, you ask yourself, what do I want to do? Let's say lose weight. I want to lose 10 pounds, right? right? Um, why am I not losing 10 pounds? Well, all right, let's figure it out. What am I linking pain to? And what am I linking? Ple- all right. So I'm pretty, I'm just going to guess you're probably linking pleasure to eating pizza, um, eating ice cream, um, um, when you feel bad or whatever, it's late at night, you have some sort of habit where you probably, instead of having one, have one little cheat every single day, right? Right. That little bit of pleasure, that little bit of dopamine that's inside of your brain, that's what you're linking your pleasure. Just a guess, you know, there could be different, oh, yeah. different for different people. What are you linking your pain to? Getting off your and actually doing something. That's what you're probably linking your pleasure to. Getting off of the couch, getting up and going to the gym. But everybody knows that once you go to the gym and you have a really good workout, you feel a lot better about yourself. Oh, yeah. You feel better as a person. You feel better about yourself and all of those things. So what's your, what are you linking pleasure to? Eating or you know, maybe it's you're eating because of the fact that you enjoy it. Maybe you're eating because of the fact you feel bad about something in your past or whatever it might be. Um, you might be eating because of that. What are you linking pain to? Getting up and actually doing it, right? Mm-hmm. And this, the whole paradigm call that we did before, this, yeah. this I, don't, I can't go into it because it's super long. I can't go into it on this time, but your paradigm also has a lot to do with it, but you're linking to getting up and doing something. So then you ask yourself, what do I need to link pain to? What do I need to link pleasure to in order to change my habits to the habits that I want to have? So you ask yourself this question, what do I need to link pain to? Or what do I need to link pleasure to? Let's do that one first. Okay. I need to link pleasure to how I'm going to feel about myself knowing that I went to the gym, my goal of going five days a week or being active. Maybe it's, maybe it's even just walking around the block every single morning, right. right? Some sort of being active. That's what you need to link pleasure to of how do you do this? And this is a really weird way, but you have a way over the top celebration whenever you do it. So if you go for a walk at 6 a.m. in the morning and you go for a walk and you just went for a walk around the park, you congratulate yourself. You, if, you're, if there's people sleeping in the house, if the kids are sleeping, <laughs> you go into the bathroom and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm so proud of you. And you're just like, do you can put music on, you can dance, you can do whatever you want to do. And you, you're, link, you're telling your brain, this was good. This was good. This was good. Right. What do you link your pleasure? That's what you link your pleasure to. This is where things start to change. And I could tell you other examples of how to make yourself successful, how to make yourself lose weight. What do you link your pain to? Well, what you got to ask yourself is what is your biggest fear of if you don't lose that weight, right? Mm. You might be 10 pounds overweight, but you might be less than this. You might be 50 pounds overweight, right? You right. could be 50 pounds overweight and you're wondering to yourself, well, what, like if I don't change now, what could happen, right? And you right. figure out what that pain is. A lot of people that I talk to have these sort of problems where they might be overweight is that they need to link their pain to, and, and this is a lot of people, it's in the back of their head, but they never bring it to the forefront because they're so afraid to think about it. Mm-hmm. Link it to the fact that you're not going to be able to watch your kids graduate. Mm. Link it to the fact that you're not going to be able to walk your daughter down the aisle if you're 50 pounds overweight. Link, link it to the fact that you might not be alive and your children are going to have to try to figure out how to do things without... Your, mm. your son might, not, might be five years old right now, but he might have to figure out how to make himself shave when he's 13 years old because mm. you couldn't get your shit together. Yes. Right. Yes. And so here's, that's, that's what you do. You figure out massive pain and ma- you know, you can't always figure out massive pleasure, you can, but usually massive pain is, is, is you're going to run away from massive pain and you only have to think about massive pain. Once you link it in your brain and it's linked, like it's really there. You only have to have your hand put on a hot stove once before you know that you're true. never going to put your hand on a hot stove again. Right. True. Very true. And so you need to figure out what that massive, massive pain is that you're trying to run away from. Um, and so you just switch your pleasure versus pain mechanism. And another example, so that's, that, that's fitness, right? Let's say if we're right. talking about, um, if we're talking about a salesperson, right? I do with a lot of salespeople and coach some salespeople. Yeah. And an example of this, and I won't give an exact example, but you know, I'll give a couple of examples. I'll kind of take people, put them together so that not, I'm not talking about one specific right. person, right, right, right. Um, but I, over thousands of people that I've, that I've coached and, and helped along the way. So, um, I'll give you an example, right? If I'm a salesperson, 
and I want to make $100,000 this year, right? I got to ask myself, well, what, what am I linking my pain to? What am I linking my pleasure to? And what I usually do when I'm on the phone with people and they're like, I, I hear this and this is the number one thing I hear from people every single time. Rob, I know what I need to do. I just, huh. for some reason, cannot make myself do it. Everybody knows. It's not like you're just, you're making this whole new path. It's like the path is there for you. You just have to do it. That's all that you really have to do. Right. And so, um, so if you think about it, uh, you ask yourself, all right, well, I'm, I want to make $100,000 this year. How much did I make last year at the same job? Let's say 40, right? That's, right. that's a big jump. That's two and a half times. It's 250%. Yeah. So that's a big jump. So let me ask you at this point in time, what are you linking pain to? What are you linking pleasure to? What's the most painful part of your job? Almost every time sales reps say, the most painful part of my job is making yes. cold calls. Why is that? Well, because of the fact that me, um, yep. because of the fact that people hang up on me, people cuss me out. Um, okay, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I'm worthless. And what it's really doing is just really putting a spotlight on almost every single person's main insecurity, and that's that I'm not enough. Uh. Someone says that you're worthless, and someone hangs up on you if you're not making the money. It's saying that you're worthless and you're, you're not enough all of the time, over and over and over again, and people are afraid of that. So that's what, your, that's what your pain is. So what do you want to switch your pain to? Well, then you have to figure out your strong emotional attachment to something. So it's like, what is, what is my why? So I want to make, let's say, $100,000 this year because most people have trouble making. That's like the first goal that everyone wants. Until you make $100,000, that's what you want to get to, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, uh, it, it's, it's not, not that as, magical. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel any better about myself. Right. I feel exactly the same. And so, and so basically, the, uh, the way to think about it is it's like, okay, so why do I want to make $100,000? I want to make $100,000 because of the fact that, you know, I want to buy a better place and move my kids out of the apartment. Okay, why do you want to do that? Uh, I want to do that because of the fact that we live in a bad part of town. I want to make sure my kids have a better education. Okay, why do you want to do that? I want to do that because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you keep going down levels and levels and levels because there's, there's levels to things. You should want to talk to people. Oh, I want to live in a nicer house. Okay, why? Why, 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 why? And you go down and you figure out what it is. And then you get to the point where you realize, you know, you, you really want to make $100,000 this year because you want to get custody of your children because you're afraid that if you don't get custody of the children, they live in a bad part of town and one of them might be shot, right? Mm. Yeah. I've had conversations like that before. And it's like surface level, I want to make $100,000. That's not going to motivate you. Making sure your, your children stay alive. You know how easy it is <laughs> to make cold calls when that's what you're worried about? Yeah. It's so easy. So you switch what you're making, what your pleasure and pain is. And then you ask yourself, when I do make $100,000, you know, if you want to find out your pleasure, what are you going to buy for yourself? How are you going to, you know, are you going to buy your mom a house? Are you going to take her out of a bad part of town that she's in? Are you just going to, whatever it is. And so right. if you have to ask yourself, if I'm not where I want to be, what am I linking pain to right now? Right. Mm -hmm. And you figure that out. It's usually just some stupid, thing of, oh, I don't, I've, I'm, I'm being judged or people don't like yep. me or I'm not enough or whatever it is. There's something, something really small and just doesn't really matter in the first place. It's all in your head. That's all that it is. And then what you do is you go, okay, well, what, what do I need? What do I really want? If I don't hit my goal of making $100,000, what's the pain I need to link to? If I don't lose these 50 pounds or 10 pounds, whatever it is, what's the pain I need to link to? And you figure out that pain that's that I, literally, I, I have a lot of phone calls with people where they break down crying. And it's not that I mean to make them do that. <laughs> but if you can start, if you can find that emotional attachment to something, you yep. can make yourself do anything that you really need to get done. Because it changes your mindset for everything. For sure. You will always run away from pain. You will always run away from pain more than you'll run towards pleasure. If, if we all ran towards pleasure, we'd all be millionaires. Right right? We're running away from some sort of pain and we have to figure out what it is. So in your, all the years that you have been mentoring and coaching and, and, and teaching, what, what time frame do you see usually it, a person takes when they're changing that, that paradigm of, of what they associate pain with? Like, like how long does it take? Yeah. Yeah. Average well, person. So here's, here's the thing is it's, it's, it depends on everybody and it depends on how much it, it could be a couple of weeks. Um, I won't say that they completely change their life in a couple of weeks, but I can say that they start to realize a lot of things about themselves. Right. Um, and the reason why is because of the fact that it can be, um, if, if, if I had bad habits, which I still have bad habits, everyone's got them. If I, had, if, I had a, if I was trying to reverse a bad habit, I'm 31 years old right now, I'm reversing 31 years of programming. You're not going to, and this is the thing, God, it's so crazy because everybody wants like immediate, like right now, can Let's yes. have one conversation and I'm going to change my life and I'm going to be a completely different person when I wake up. No, it's not. 
you'll be excited 10 minutes, 30 minutes when we get off the phone. And then it's like, you know, you have to, you have to continue to work at it. Um, and the reason why is because everything's so immediate right now. Like, and, and the way I always give the example is, do you remember when you were a kid and you wanted to know something You'd have to go to like the library. You'd have to hope that they had the encyclopedia that had the letter. And if it didn't, you'd be like, oh, well, I guess, I guess we'll never really know how far away the sun is from the earth. Right? Right. Now, right. I, was, I love this. And so like, for instance, now we have this where we could go, you know, I could take my phone and say, how far away is the moon from the earth? The moon is 238,900 miles from earth. Right. Like it, that, that wasn't a thing. So everyone's so yeah. used to so immediate true. gratification. Um, and in the 1980s, they said that people had a, uh, an, an average attention span of 29 minutes in the 1980s. In 2016, it was eight seconds. Oh my And so gosh. people like wow. want change right yeah. away. And so when you're asking how long does it take, it depends on how much work somebody wants to put in themselves. Yeah. If I'm 31 years old and I'm trying to reverse something I've been doing for 31 years, a, a pattern of thinking over 31 years, number one, you just have to become very self-aware and understand that you're going to have to do it every single day. And usually if I'm, if I'm a negative person, I have had negative thoughts running through my head hundreds mm. of times, if not thousands of times, every single day for the past 31 years. I'm not going to change that right away. But what yeah. I can do is I can immediately become self-aware. And when I get that negative thought, I had it today when I was at the gym and I had this negative thought. And I was like, where the hell did that come from? Huh. Right? Like, it's just like, it's an immediate thing. But I, I can step back and go, okay, hold on. What was your negative thought? I don't even remember what it was. But I, I, <laughs> I honestly, remember if thinking, I, that's weird. <laughs> what was it? Hold on. I don't even remember what. Oh, I remember exactly what it was. I do remember. Um, this person, I won't say whether it was male or female, okay. was wearing like the ugliest colored shoes ever. <laughs> and it just so happened that they were wearing a shirt that was the exact same color. And I was like, those shoes are ugly. But to have those shoes and that shirt, like that's really bad. And so like, in my, and to say that makes me sound like I'm a complete a-hole, no. right? But I had that thought go through my head of that judgmental, which is just a pattern that I've learned to judge people quickly, right? Right. right. But I was able to take myself back and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, why did you just say that to yourself? Yeah. Why, do you, why did you really just think that? Right. Um, and so if, if I'm trying to reverse a pattern or habit that I've had for 31 years, it could take some time. Yeah. Um, I've been spending 10 years, uh, let's see, 12 years now trying to reverse negative thoughts. And I've gotten rid of most of them, but still I get ones like that that pop up every single day. Right. Um, but you have to become self-aware and realize that, you know, to link some some hard, if I put your your hand on a hot stove, in a week from now you're you're going to be pulling away to get that hot stove Absolutely. away, get away from that hot stove. And so, um, if you can link massive pain to something, um, and if you're trying to make a hundred phone calls a day, and the reason why is because you need to make this money because you need to get custody of your kids because of this, then you should take that picture of your kids and you should put it next to that phone mm. and you should look at them every single time. Yep. And and then when somebody hangs up on you, you're like, you look at the picture of your kids and you say not a really big deal because no. I'm working for them. Exactly. Right? That gives me chills for sure. Yeah. And so that's, that's just kind of how you switch your, your pain and, and pleasure mechanism in your brain. We have um, people that follow me online because I, I, I like to do a lot of live broadcast. I, I call that that negative voice Shonda. Um, and Shonda? Yes. <laughs> and okay. it, it may or may not be based on a, an actual live character in, in, person named Shonda, okay. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, that, that identifying that voice and, and, you know, especially with the customers that I work with, so many people have such a loud Shonda. And mm -hmm. I, in fact, I have t-shirts that are being made that are, that say hashtag shut up Shonda, because <laughs> I, I, I want to teach them how awesome. to identify. I mean, the fact that you, obviously you've been working on personal development and mindset for years, but right. you know, the fact that you had that realization of like, why did I even have that negative thought? most of the people that start working with me don't even have that mindfulness of, of how loud that voice is and, right. and learning how to identify when that voice is talking to you. And, and, you know, I always tell them, if you wouldn't say that to your mom, your sister, your best friend, why mm -hmm. are you saying it to yourself? Mm -hmm. And, exactly. but, but they, but they don't realize how loud that voice is and, and how hard it is to really learn to shut, shut up well, there in the corner. It's uh, and I said the exact same thing where it's like, you would never talk to someone that you love the way that you talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, the, the interesting thing about your brain is that you have your conscious mind, you have your subconscious mind. Like 95% of what you do is, is yeah. through aut your automatic brain, through your subconscious. And the crazy thing about it is that, and this is, they actually found that out it was the, uh, I think it was like 1932 Olympics, the 30s, somewhere in the 30s where the Germans, they destroyed everybody in running. Like they were just the most amazing sprinters and runners. And they're like, what did they do? And they found out their subconscious mind. So what they did was they would go run every single day 
They would run every single day exactly like a normal person would train. They would train exactly the same as a normal Olympic runner. And they would go into these rooms and for hours they would close their eyes and they would visualize running and winning the races every single day huh. for four years. And what they found out later on down the road once they started studying the brain is that if you close your eyes, visualize yourself running the race and winning the race, the exact same neurons and neurotransmitters in your brain fire as if you're actually running it. So not only did they run the race every single day, thousands of times every single day after they got done running the races. Wow. And so it's, that's also being said where your subconscious automatically stores it as true. So yeah. they what the normal nerves and fears that you would feel when you're about to go run an Olympic race, your, your Olympic race, you've been waiting for this for four years. They didn't have because they already ran the race and won it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And brain, your subconscious mind does not know what is true and what is false. It just is a filing cabinet source. Everything right. is true. So that being said, if I'm, you tell you yourself apply you're that stupid, to anything, I for mean, sure. that's and the crazy thing. Especially oh. with the way that you talk to yourself though. If yes. I tell myself I'm an idiot, that nobody loves me, that I, whatever it is, that I'm ugly, all of these things over and over and over and over and over again. I am going, your subconscious is going to say that is true and you're going to take actions that actually line up with that. You know, you're going to think about if, why is, you can't be a negative person and have a positive life. It just doesn't no. work that way. No. And right. so if you tell yourself, oh, I'm so fat, I'm so overweight. Oh, this is, this is my issue. This is, you know, people don't love me. I'll never be in shape. Well, of course, then you never will be because you're, you're going to bring into reality the thoughts that you think in your head. And your subconscious is going to store every single thing is true. If you ever say, I am fat, I am lazy, I am a procrastinator, I'm an emotional person, I am a lazy person, any of those things, conscious is going, okay, that's true. Stanley and then you're going to true. actually have actions that line up with that because that is true. That's yeah. the truth. That's what yeah. your brain knows. Man, that, I mean, just ways that I can use this for my own business, for my, to help my customers and coaches. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> just the art of, of, I, I'm going to totally apply this to my customers because, I, because that, that is my biggest challenge is mm -hmm. getting people. Cause obviously, you know, I always tell them I can help you lose some weight in, in 30 days, but to, to make this lifestyle stick, right. it, you have to learn how to change your mindset. And, right. and that is not easy. Right. And it's not a, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. You said no, it right. Exactly. But, exactly. But that's the thing is, is, is here's the thing. If, I'm 20 pounds overweight. This is why it happens all the time. And this, this is exactly what happens. If I'm 20 pounds overweight, I can lose those 20 pounds if I work really hard over a month or two. But there's a pretty good chance that if I am not talking to myself the correct way and I still have that shit on my yes. head, that I'm going to gain those 20 pounds eventually because that is the person that I see in my head. Yes. And you will always be the person she in your head. So if you don't like the person that you are now, that's the person that you've created because that's the person that you've always seen in your head your entire life. But it doesn't mean that it has to be that way forever, which is a good thing about it. So right. um, that's why people who win the lottery, they end up becoming more, they go, uh, most people who win the lottery end up having less money years down the road than they did before they won the lottery. And the reason why is because of the actual mindset that they have mm -hmm. around money. Exactly. Right. And so um, it's, it's just, uh, it's a thing that people don't really understand. And um, it's, it, people are starting to understand it, but uh, we still have a long time before it starts to become as widespread as I was. Yeah. We, and well, and especially in a category like health and fitness. And I mean, I know that you help people in all different areas, business and, and health and fitness and whatnot, but mm -hmm. um, it's, this is, this is an episode, whether they watch or listen to that, I have a feeling it's going to be listened to over and over again, because I mean, this is a game changer. Yeah, I hope so. I hope sure. so. Cool. For sure. And, um, I am totally going to get you and your girlfriend, a shut up Shonda t-shirt and I'm going to need you to <laughs> send pick it to a beautiful Rome? place in Italy yeah. and take a picture of it for my social media. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll do that. We'll do now, it. now tell me why are you moving to Italy for six months? Because it's amazing because awesome. so it's always been, because it's always been my goal to, have a business that could be run from overseas or from anywhere because right. um, in 2012, I quit a job that I had and uh, I was just burnt out. I was like, I'm just going to travel. And so I backpacked Europe for three months and uh, it was the best three months of my entire life. And so I was like, I need to do this again. And so we went to Italy. Um, I've been to Italy three times. Um, so in 2012, I went at 14, I took my mom to Italy and in 2016, my girlfriend and I went and we're like, we should move here. That would be amazing. And so, um, you know, it's, it's happening in, uh, in 30 days, which is the best part. 
Well, and the thing that I want to uh, point out to the listeners is that um, it, you are following your dreams. You're just another example of a person who is living a life by design and yeah. you can't live a life by design unless you start up here. Mm -hmm, and, and, sure. and you are so, I don't, I don't know if lucky is the right adjective to, to use, but, um, you, I definitely think that your cr crossing paths with personal development at such a young age has everything mm -hmm. to do with your success. And because you started training your mind at a time where most people are worried about getting drunk and doing drugs and, you know, that's the last thing that they care about. And right. you were smart enough to realize that, okay, this is where the power is. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, knowledge, uh, like I say, always say knowledge is potential power and you have tapped into that potential power and you're living a life by design that I, yeah. I know everyone that crosses your path is inspired. By. Thank you. I, I, I am for the reason why I do what I do is because I am I understand that and I am so grateful for it. And I want to try to get it to as many people as possible. It's like, I'm just some random guy that just, just learns stuff and then just put it into action. That's all that I did. I'm not, I'm really nothing special. If you look at any of the emails I send out or any of my blogs, half of it's misspelled. Every single time I send an email out, my girlfriend is on my email list and she's like, why, why did you, did you not read this? I'm like, I don't know. I just, I'm not good at these things. Like, and, and then I, I, I had a, I had a video where somebody commented on today and she's like, uh, he said raise, he meant rise. And it's like, yeah, so I screwed it up. I screwed up a lot of stuff, but it's like, yes. there's nothing special about me. It's just that I learned stuff and I, I wanted to start teaching it to other people. And um, I am so grateful because I know that I would not be the person I am without personal growth, without yeah. as corny as it sounds to go to a self-help section and start yeah. reading these books. It sounds crazy, but, um, but it changed my life and I'm just a normal guy. So I know that it can work with anybody else. And so yeah. that's, that's just what I'm trying to, to put out into the world as well. Yeah. So uh, everyone can find you on different platforms. So let's, mm -hmm. let's remind them, obviously your, your podcast, which is awesome. And if they haven't subscribed to that and mine, they mm -hmm. need to go do that tonight, today, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe to it. So it's MWF motivation. Correct. Same for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is when the episodes come out. Yes. They're usually, uh, what's your longest podcast? I'm just curious. Cause um, I, longest... that's what I love about them is they're usually brief and you can get them. Yeah. Quick. If it's if it's not an interview, um, my interview is usually around an hour. But if it's not an interview, probably twenty five minutes. Yeah, um, they're quick. Usually, I try to make about ten to fifteen minutes um, yeah. because I when I used to drive in to go to the office, I hated that podcasts would take an hour or two hours. I wouldn't be able to listen to the whole thing. And right. I always have, I have this, this thing in my brain where I want to finish something. And so it pissed me off that I wasn't <laughs> done with it. So I was like, I'm going to make a podcast that just, I would be done with it if I was still driving to the office. Right. So that's, that's what it is. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so they can find you your podcast and then yep. where else can they find you? Um, any, almost anywhere that there's social media. So my biggest ones that I put the most time into Facebook, um, which is facebook.com slash MWF motivation. Um, that one's, uh, we got like $92,000 on or something like that. That's the one I put the most time into okay. Instagram. I put up videos and quotes on there. That's Instagram. Um, that, that at handle MWF motivation. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, those are the two months, two ones that I would put the most time into. Um, okay. and, and then if they like videos, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube pretty new, right? Yeah. YouTube.com slash MWF motivation. So I'm putting up three to five videos a week at this point yes. in time. Okay. Your handle for everything. It's not for YouTube. It's Rob Dial. Okay. Okay. Because whoever Rob Dial is took it on Instagram and on Facebook. Ah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to have to see if I can. A friend requested Rob Dial on Facebook. So I'm going to be like, hey, dude, can I pay you to get this? So, yeah, seriously. Seriously. Some older guy, like he doesn't even post anything. We became friends like last week. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to see if I get that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need, you need to do that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Um, I have no doubt that, um, this particular episode, along with all of the other episodes that you've done on your own podcast are changing people's lives, it pa paying it forward and exponentially changing people's lives. So thank you so much for your time. And, um, anything else that I have forgotten to, to ask or that you wanted to, to address before we get no, going. No, that was it. We got okay. everything. I appreciate Excellent. it. It was fun. Excellent. It, most, most definitely. And, and we'll make an, another podcast live for Italy. Maybe. Uh, I mean, like that would I'll, be a first I'll for have me. the Coliseum behind me or something. Yes. Yes. I'm actually going to be eating be... pizza. I'll be, I'll be just be, I'll be eating pizza, drinking wine. And I'll just be like, 
Well, you'll, will oh, you will you be there in January? Um, in Italy? I will not. No, I come in to, come back in December. <laughs> Nuts, because I, I I'm yeah. gonna be doing um some some touring in Europe next year, but it's mm-hmm. not gonna be till January. So. Oh. And we'll miss each other just a little yeah. bit. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. And um, and those of you that um, haven't gone to the, the podcast, Fits and Healthy, make sure that you go to the iTunes podcast app, subscribe to Fits and uh, leave a review for me. I would love to hear your thoughts um, because ultimately this, this podcast is for you guys. So um, Rob, thank you and um, hope you guys have a Fits and Healthy day. Ciao. Make sure that you find us on social media. You can find Synthony on Instagram and Facebook at Synthony. So that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E. And on Snapchat at Synthony P. And find me on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Club Fits Fitness. Remember, that's F-I-T-Z Fitness. And on Snapchat, just at Club Fits. I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now, go live a fits and healthy life.